ladies and gentlemen, this is no, no. We don't have to. No, they they know what it looks like. I, I can't I I can't fit us in and do everything else. Um, before we get into the list, you know, we start every puck schmuck show. And most every single thing that we do, uh, we start by talking about the fancy bros, fancy football draft kit, and. I've told you guys about for last month or so that this here is exactly what you need if you're going to have a fantasy football draft party. Mainly because it, it's a board and you're getting and you've got stickers and everything, and it makes it a little bit more fun because you don't have to write stuff down. You don't have to. You just take the thing and say, you know, the big tune is taking Derek Carr in the round four. I hope not. I hope I'm not taking it, <laughs> but. Um, I can't say much. I took a kicker in the sixth round once. Did you really? Yeah, Kai Forbath. Big ups. Oh, I thought it would be... Uh, no, it was just Goskowski. because... It's just because I was a Redskins fan. Oh, my God. You, you know what the funny thing is? Speaking of fantasy football, like my first two or three years, it was all Raiders. And after I like realized that it can't be all Raiders, it's, it's, it's funny because I kind of don't do it, so I don't get pissed off yeah. at them even more after they lose and give me no fantasy points. But... Um, like we were just saying, the Fantasy Football Draft Kit here by Fantasy Bros gives you this board here and a booklet of stickers with up-to-date uh, teams. Like, it's just like video games, right? You can do the download yeah. and all that stuff. It's pretty much the same thing. We got it about a month and a half ago, and it had all the rookies already uh, unsigned or signed. Yeah. They were on the team. So what you can do is there will be a link in the description. You click on that link. Press shop now, and then when it asks you for a promo code, when you check out, you put in BB Sports 15. You get 15% off uh, the fantasy football draft kit here. And they don't just have fantasy football draft kits. They've got a fantasy football Lombardi trophy. They're getting championship belts, which will probably be right here as soon as they're available. And they also sell the fantasy football championship rings, which is pretty fun. Yes. I'm not going to lie to you. That's pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, the link will be in the description. Fantasy Bros, Fantasy Football Kit, uh, BB Sports 15 to get 15% off uh, that actual draft kit. Um, so, this is the, I always get, is it the fourth or the fifth episode? Uh, it's the fifth episode. The fifth episode of Pock Schmucks, and we're still working on the top uh, 50 NHL players right now. And we are going from number 30 to 21. And let me move this real quick because we're done with it for now. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm, su I'm excited to do it, but I'm also a little upset only because it's extremely tough. Because you look at one player and then you're like, but wait a minute, is he better than that player? Is he better? It's, it's just, it's almost like we should have just done the list and just talked yeah. about it on there. But, oh, before we get into it, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Um, also, comment below on your thoughts. There was a guy that said, Backstrom at 50 at your thing, and I thought it was funny, just because he didn't say anything else. Yeah. He just said, Backstrom at 50, and it seemed like he just quit. But, uh, you know, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're going to be uploading from now on Thursdays and Fridays. That's going to be the schedule here. We're going to do two shows real quick, and then if there's any breaking news, we'll do, we'll do a little video as well. Especially when the football season starts, there's going to be a lot of stuff going. And then the hockey season starts, so it's going to be a lot of videos. Um, follow us on Instagram, at Bigger and Bradder Sports. We're also on Twitter. I'm at Big Tuna BBS. Bradder is at Defense 12 Brad, and he will be back in August. Had a baby. Give him some time. And? Scoonies with two E's. Two E's on the end. I always get confused when I say Scoonie is Scoonie. It was two E's. Um, all right, so number 30 to 21. Uh, Go for it. I mean, number 30 for me was Vladimir Tarasenko, and the only reason I put him there is because I did, like, what we were talking about. I couldn't rank him above the, you know what I'm saying, the rest that were left. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm going to be a dick, and number 21, I have two. I had to make it a tie. But uh, Vladimir Tarasenko, uh, a budding superstar who has a chance to be one of those guys who is in, like, the... 30 to 50 goals a year club. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's always good for that. And he's Russian, so you know he can score. Yeah. Who's your number 30? My 30, I got Jack Eichel. Yeah, we're 10 off there yeah. between us. I, I was I number, you, I I was number 40. Of, for me, he's just young. He's 21 years old. 
64 points, 25 goals, 39 assists. He's the second overall pick three years ago. You got to give him time, but I think he's a great player. The he's thing going to do big things in Buffalo. I they just need to put a team around him. The, well, that, see, now here's the thing about Eichel, and then we've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's just something about him that I just don't like. And it's it doesn't mean he's not a good player. Right. He's a fantastic player, but it just seems like he needs to have everything right for him to play great. You know what I'm saying? And that's the only thing about him. other than that is great. You know, he's a very talented player, but it's his team now. Ryan O'Reilly's gone, and it's it's kind of like uh, what we were saying about Barzal with the Islanders. Like, let's see what he can do. Yeah. It's his team now. Uh, my number 29, I'm upset he's this high, but Mitch Marner, the center slash right wing for the Toronto Maple Leafs. I mean, he's got to be right wing at this point. How many centers can they have on that spot? It's just on the thing. It's at center right yeah. wing. I put it in there. Yeah. But uh, Mitch Marner is probably going to have – a good year, not a great year because of the people he has around him. Only because it, it just, there's not enough to go around. And he's one of those guys that I, I could see more as an assist man than a goal man. And I could see him having 15 goals and like 41 assists or something like that. Not a bad year, but, you know, he's surrounded by so many good players. There's not not many goals to, to kind of divvy up. You know, there's going to be a lot of guys in the Maple Leafs that are going to be in between the oh, 10 to 20 thing, and then Matthews and Tavares will be above them. I see. Right, and I got Marner a little bit lower, so I'll talk about him after. Uh, 29, I got Johnny Goudreau, uh, left wing. Johnny Calgary. Hockey. Yep. Uh, 84 points in the year, 24 goals, 60 assists. I mean, you can always count on for a good 50, 60 plus assists every year. He's, he, he just finds it. Finds open man every time. He's one of those guys, too, that, you know, they've got a nice young core in Calgary. I've yeah. always enjoyed the Calgary Flames. They're, I guess they're my team of the West, um, you know, because I've always followed them in Edmonton a lot. And, uh, you know, he's got Kachuk. He's got Monahan. He's got Bennett. There's some pieces there now with James Neal going yeah. there as well. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what he does because he is getting – more mature. I mean, he's 24 years old. Yeah. 312 games. He has 288 points. In yeah, his I mean, you I mean, can't. He's basically up there to point a game. And it's funny too because he, I believe, he came from college. And yeah. A lot of, and I'm not, I'm not making fun of college. It's just that you don't really see like big talent like that coming from college. Yeah. Uh, my number 28 is Dustin Bufflin, and you know, guys, I I put him here because he is ranked higher on the list. Yes. But I looked at the other defensemen that I have there, and I just didn't think he was better than the two I have above him uh, and the other ones in the rest of the list. But uh, Bufflin is one of those guys that I, I like his style of play. I was not a fan of the way he acted during the uh, one playoff series because he kind of looked like he gave up, but he also yeah. thought it was an icing. I don't like that. You know, I usually there's something about Dustin Bufflin from him. He was a forward in Chicago, and then he's a defenseman with Atlanta, a defenseman with the Jets. It's just very odd, but you don't get an A on your jersey for nothing. Uh, always been a fan of him because he wore 33. Uh, you know, I'm going to be interested to see what he does this year, especially with that team. That team has got a lot of good players, and I've got one, two, and another two in my top 28 from the Jets. They're very, very, very stacked. So yeah. that's the team I think is going to make the Stanley Cup. I really think so. So, but you know, we'll go, we'll go from there when that happens. Yep. Uh, my twenty-eight is Mitch Marner. We were talking about him before. Uh, Sixty-nine points on the year. I Twenty-two love goals, forty-seven assists. Like you said, he's an assist man. He's going to put up forty to fifty assists every year. If he gives you twenty goals, that's all you can ask from him. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he was the fourth pick in that same uh, draft with Eichel. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, there's a lot of talent that came out of that draft. He's twenty-one years old, and he's got a lot of. Uh, so let me ask you this: if family. if if you just you know what they can do. Yep. And let's say you're you've got the third pick, and Eichel and Marner are left. Who would you draft? It's tough. And it really comes down to what you're, what you need. But obviously, they're both starting at center, so they're in the exact same position. Yeah. I mean, they're really not that different as players. Uh, I think that Marner had a lot more around him, obviously, in terms of Matthews, and could do a bit more than Eichel could, because Eichel's really been on his own other than with O'Reilly, um, who's obviously you know, not, not there anymore. Big. Right. <laughs> um, so I mean, it's it's definitely tough. They're both great players, but I'd have to go with Eichel. So. I, you know, the weird thing is, is so would I, even though we have uh, Marner ranked above Eichel, and it just seems like. Marner is a fantastic player, but he's a bridesmaid. Eichel's a bride. You know, Eichel is the superstar 
if they were on the same team here, Ika would still be the superstar. Yeah. You know, and Marner would be that guy that people love. He, he's got a lot of enthusiasm with his game, but I would pick Eichel as well. It's funny that you do that stuff, and it's true. I would pick Eichel as well. Uh, my number 27 is Brent Burns. And a lot of people would say, 27, you know, he's a monster. He is a monster offensively. Defensively, I think he's somewhat of a liability only because he gets caught. He's He goes very low for defensemen. But I also think his coach is making him, telling him to do that. But um, I, I'm trying to do this not so much by fantasy and by player. And I just think Brent Burns is a great defenseman offensively. But it, is not, it, it hurts his defensive, defensive thing. And he's a defenseman. So th that's what he needs to do. If he was good both ways, he'd probably be in the top five. I mean, for me, he's got way too great of a beard to be outside the yeah. top twenty. So he got a bit lower. We'll talk about it's, him next dude, week. Dude, have you have you ever seen the like yeah. the maturation of him from the wild to oh, it's disgusting. It's like he it's like he forgot to bathe. Yeah, you yeah. Know? <laughs> uh, my twenty-seven, I'd Phil Kessel. Oh, well, you had One him ranked favorites. a lot higher than I did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right win. Been playing for a long, long time. Thirty years old now. Right. Like 92 points on the air. You can't beat that. 34 goals. And I think that's assists. why a lot of people gave him shit because yeah. he had such a great season. Yeah, he did. He had a great year. I mean, for 30 years old, you can't expect much more. Um, he's been on that team for a little bit now. He's, he's gotten them where they need to be. But they didn't get past Washington this year. No, no. And that's and he's one of the reasons we didn't get by Washington. Yes. Yeah, and uh, and I don't. they shouldn't have traded him. Obviously, everyone was mad when that stuff happened. Yeah. But, I mean, he came off his best year. Do you really want to trade a guy who's coming off his best year? Like, no. But here's another thing. With Kessel doing what he did in Boston and then doing what he did in Toronto and now what he's done in Pittsburgh, yeah. do you think, maybe not the NHL, not the whole Hockey Hall of Fame, but I do think – he will be inducted in the American Hockey Hall of Fame. Oh, I agree. Absolutely. I think so. Yeah, I really do. I mean, I just think he is. Because people don't realize this. He, Toronto was a shit team. Yeah. And they made it to the playoffs only one year, and every year he was their leading scorer. And he missed a lot of games and still was their leading scorer. I just think that he needed to go to a different team to show yeah. how good he really was because Toronto never helped them. And Toronto fans can be upset. But with him leaving, you got Austin Matthews. So. Tit for tat. Yeah, right, not too bad. Uh, my number 26 is Mark Shifley, and I wish I could have him higher only because another guy that I love. I mean, right now I've got literally five jerseys on order right now, and Shifley, uh, Artemi Panarin, who's on my list too, and Mitch Marner. I'm getting all three of them. You know, I just Shifley is one of those guys, once again, not flashy, but yep. goddamn, he can score. And he was up in the top ten, uh, I think, in points overall, or in top twenty, maybe this year. I think so. He was um, points per game. I mean, he had uh, he only played sixty games on the year, but he had sixty points in the sixty games. Oh no, no, I'm thinking of Line A. Line yeah. A was a lot higher, but Shifley, if he had another twenty-two games, oh, yeah. he would have been right up yep. there. Shifley is one of those guys that you would love in the playoffs because he had a great playoffs until they got to Vegas, but. Uh, but then the whole Jets team fell apart when they went to Vegas. But Shifley's another guy that I absolutely love and would love to have him on the Penguins. Uh, my 26, Patrice Bergeron. Heart and soul of oh, Boston okay, yeah. Bruins. You got him a little bit lower. I got him a little bit lower um, just because it's it's not because of fantasy. It's just set apart. Yeah, you know, no, I, just I mean, I love him. Patrice Bergeron. It's hard to hate him. He's yeah. been there for, what, 13 years now, 12 years. I mean, he's played his entire career. He's 33. Played his entire, or his entire career um, in Boston. I think he got there and he was like 22 or so, so probably 11, 12 years now. But, uh, I mean, he's consistent. 63 points, 30 goals, 33 assists. See, the one thing that, if he was selfish, yeah, he would have 90 points a year, but Absolutely. he loves playing defense for some reason. And that's what I love. He'd rather win. Yeah, that's the thing. It's just like the whole, people have arguments about um, other players that don't have a lot of points, but they're great on defense. Folks. You need defense to win championships. And Patrice Bergeron every year is in the running for the best offensive defenseman. Yeah. Uh, my number 25 is Artemi Panarin. Love him. I have no clue why Chicago traded him. I, mean, I, I don't understand. I'm actually, his Chicago jersey is what I ordered. You have 32 goal seasons in a row, and then you get traded to the Blue Jackets and do just as good, if not better, and Chicago didn't even make the playoffs. Yeah. 
one of the most puzzling off seasons I've ever seen in my life two years ago with Chicago. But Artemi Panarin, just like Tarasenko, another Russian that has a lot of stuff in front of him. Yeah. Um, before I, with the Patrice Bergeron thing, and I did not look at the top 50 thing, but Brad Marchand is probably higher than Patrice Bergeron. I didn't see where Marchand is. That's what I'm wondering, too. I'm, I'm going to have to look at it yeah. while you explain your... My 25, I actually have the exact same person. Oh, yeah, uh, Panarin. Panarin. Yeah. Uh, 82 points in the year, 27 goals, 55 assists, uh, 243 career games. He has 233 career, career points. Um, he has a lot of goals. Yeah, he has right, a lot 20, of goals. 26 years old. I mean, he's got a lot of... Another lot of nice guy time. who developed a little bit later, just like another guy I have on our listing who's that's off. It took him a while. That's, a, that's, that's, that's embarrassing. Absurd. I Well, no, you know what? It isn't because they're basing that in fantasy. Yeah. And Brad Marchand is in the top ten where I would literally flip-flop it yeah, with him and Bergeron only because Bergeron said, we'll plays such good. Season. Yeah. I just, I just don't think. Yeah. I, I don't, I'm not going to have him in the top ten. Um, okay. So my 24 is, is a little. A bit of a stretch. I see. No, I don't think so. I no. think where he is. Because I had him a lot higher, a whole lot lower. At, you're talking about in the 40, 30s and 40s. I had him like 35. See, I've got and it's Eric Carlson is my 24, and just like Backstrom, I I was not gonna have him under 30, you know, or above 30, only because Eric Carlson had a shit year. The team was shit, but. If you watch that playoff run they had two years ago when they got beat in the finals, like, he played on, like, one leg, and he was still phenomenal. The only thing that I don't like about his play, and I always play devil to advocate with every single pick, is that he plays a lot of minutes, so he's going to wear down quicker, and that does hurt you in the playoffs when you play that many minutes. So, I, I, at 24, I'm happy with him at 24. I almost tried to get him closer, but I was like, nah, 24. 24. <laughs> My 24, Anze Kopitar, uh, center for the Kings. I'm surprised you had him s yeah. not lower. Yeah, I mean, he's a, good, he's a great player. He's getting a little bit older. He's not going to be able to the same amount yeah. of points. He's 30 years old. He had a great season. 90, 94. 90, 92 points, 35 goals, 57 assists. And won the most. And won the best defensive forward. Yep. And he got 92 points. Right. That's Imagine if he just focused on offense. Yeah, he would have had 112 10. points. Yep. Um, once again, Anzi Kopitar, I've got his jersey in order too. I've always loved the way he plays, and I mean, you just can't go wrong with him, as well as you can't go wrong with Patrice Bergeron, who I have at 23. Uh, we talked a lot about him. There's not much you can say about Patrice Bergeron, only that in every Olympic World Cup of Hockey, anything, he's always on the first line. Yeah. And the, the last World Cup of Hockey, it was... Bergeron, Crosby, Marchand. So that there's your first line. In the Olympics, Bergeron, Crosby, and I think it was Kunitz or something like that. But still, he's that good to be on your first line yeah. and would be on your first penalty kill. That's the kind of guy that I love. That's why I've always loved the stalls, um, because they play such great defense, in my opinion. Okay, yeah. So who's that? Who's uh, that? My 23 had Mike Shifley. Shifley, uh, yeah. I mean, Shifley's a good player. Right? 60 points in 60 games this year. Yeah. Uh, 23 goals, 37 assists. Obviously, if he played 82 games, he would have had about 90 points somewhere near there. Yeah. Um, I mean, he puts up good points. Great center to have. Yeah, and it, you know, you don't get the A on your jersey because of nothing. Yeah. You know, I mean, he... It, him and Line kind of came in at the same time, kind of sprouted at the same time and started to play better at the same time and Line didn't get the A and he did. Which I commend Winnipeg for because usually if you're a super young superstar you just get an A. Yeah. You know, and it, it's something where you have to earn it. And I think Shifley's one of those guys that he's a grinder, very talented, not the best player on his team, but top three in my opinion. My number twenty two is Evgeny Kuznetsov, a guy who another guy that I could have put in the in the teens, yep. but the only thing about him is that, you know, no, 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 that's not the only thing. I could have had him in the teens because he is one of those guys that you never hear about. He has yeah. ninety points a year, you know. He just and he's consistent he's like and twenty three and he's very young. You know, it's it's funny because, you know, as the Capitals do get older, and some of those guys like Oshie, Backstrom, and Ovechkin. You know, sometimes one of those players gets X'd, 
And if you told me I had to pick between Kuznetsov and Oshi, I would pick Kuznetsov. If you told me I had to pick between Backstrom and Kuznetsov, it would depend on the year. You know, if it's five years from now, obviously it's Kuznetsov. Yeah. If it's in two years, I don't know. And obviously I would never pick Kuznetsov over Ovechkin. But he is one of those guys, another guy who does not get a lot of publicity, and he's a fantastic player. Had, had probably one of the... If it wasn't for so many goals by Ovechkin, he should have won the con Smythe. Yeah. Because that's off, so. Um, my 22, I got Vladimir Tarasenko. Wow, you had um, a lot higher than I did. You know, I had him a, lot, a little bit higher. I think a lot of reasons that people had him a little lower is just because he's a manager. Um, yeah. You know, he had 60, 60 points. No, 66 points on the year. 33 goals, 33 assists. I mean, he's 26 years old, and that's 350 career points already. Uh, 178 goals, 172 yeah. assists. Like those are great numbers for a 26 year old kid. And and the other thing too is is that listen, he's on the West Coast. If he was on the East, he'd have 80 points. The West Coast, except for a few teams, are more defensive based. St. Louis is one of them, and they're lucky to have Tarasenko. But he's another player that I'm scared they're going to end up losing because. He's more of a scorer than he is, a, a, you know what I'm saying? But we'll see what happens there. I always play devil's advocate with some of these guys only because a lot of these guys, I think they could be a lot better. But the teams that have them, they just don't know how to, yeah. they don't know how to manage them right. Um, I had a tie for 21 because I couldn't figure it out. But I had two guys that almost have the same game, and that's Anze Kopitar and Nicholas Backstrom. Nicholas Backstrom... I don't know why he was so low he on the like thing. 64, 65. Yeah. I have no idea what Nick Backstrom did to the <laughs> NHL really? because he was voted the most underrated player in the whole NHL. He's only been vo he's only been selected, not voted. He's only been selected to one All Star game. I mean, he was he was what Malkin is to Crosby as him to Ovechkin. Yeah. You know, it's 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 mind-blowing that he doesn't have more accolades, and I'm very happy he won a Stanley Cup because that made him all of Famer, Agreed. in my opinion. Um, I would love to see that if, like, if the one class was Ovechkin, Backstrom, Crosby, maybe Malkin, but Holtby, maybe, maybe even Flurry. Yeah. That would be so cool to have them all go in because it was such a great rivalry. Yeah. Um, but Anze Kopitar, we've talked about. Nicholas Backstrom, I could talk for 40 minutes yes. about how good this player is. If you look at his stats, some seasons he had better stats than Ovechkin. And people still didn't give him any credit. Yeah. And if Ovechkin wasn't on the team, I don't want to say he would be the superstar, but he would be, would the, be superstar. the superstar. He would be the captain. He would be the captain, but he's also one of those guys that I don't think really wants the limelight. Yeah. And good for him, but he he, he deserves it because he's a fucking great player. I mean, I'm, I'm trying not to swear as much, but he's a fucking great player. Very, very good. Um, so, yeah, I couldn't I couldn't decide. I, I, I Looking at the rest of the players, I couldn't put him yeah. in the top 20 because it's like, no, he's not better than him. No, he's not better than yeah. him. But then again, and I don't know, you can disagree with me on it, but also there, Backstrom, he could be 21, he could be 51, he could also be 6. Yeah. You know, it just depends on what you're criterion it by. For me, it's just based solely on who I think is, and, you know, the 20 guys ahead of him I think are just better. Yeah. You know, but like I said, he could be, if they talk about just assists, he'd be in the top five. If they talk about uh, playmaking, top five. Yeah. But overall, I do think he's, 21's a good spot for him. I agree. Uh, my 21, I had Connor Hellebuck. Uh, just signed a new deal uh, with Winnipeg. Right? Just that, what, what yeah, no, he, he got he got paid, and I don't... <sighs> I thought he should have won the Vesna. I don't think Pecorine should have. Yeah, only, I agree with that. Only because... I don't want to say the Vesna is like the Heisman Trophy, but it kind of is. Not lately, because the Heisman people have been getting better as yeah. of late. But, you know, like the Robert Griffin stuff and all that, where they're actually looking at talent. Yeah. Um, but Connor Hellebuck... In my opinion, should have won the Vesna because Nashville, as stacked as the Jets were, Nashville was even better. Yeah. And the Jets beat the tar out of them. But unfortunately, in the NHL, it's for the season. Yeah, and Rene was great. I mean, so was Hellebuck. He went 44, 11, and 9 on the yeah. year. Uh, 236 goal against. 
with a 924 save percentage. You're gonna you're Those gonna win every numbers. game if you only yeah. let it two and a half goals. Kid, yeah, he's got a bright future ahead of him. And you know what? The the worst thing is is I don't even think he was the starter last year. No, he wasn't. I think he like split it a little bit. And the funny thing is is that there's a they I think I believe they traded uh, one of their goaltenders because they signed him as a starter, not thinking Hellebuck would be that good, which I don't understand because he did well in the. Uh, uh, you know, in, in uh, the minors and stuff like that. It's just, I, I put it when I posted something on, on our Facebook page that it was like, I think this guy, I, I released the finalists. And I was like, Hellebuck for sure, because of the team that was around him. It's as much as the Jets are good, on the defense they're lacking a little bit. And he was there to help them because he did beat the Predators, yeah. but unfortunately in the conference finals, it, they like the Jets just disappeared and turned into the New York Jets. Yeah, um, right. So we got a couple more minutes. So we're looking into the top twenty, and like I'm gonna have Hellebuck in the top in yeah. the top twenty. If I don't know how to work this, okay. Let's say that you have you get three draft picks, and you get three guys that you want to start a team around. And like for me, it would be goalie. Mm -hmm. Defenseman, yeah. center. Right. You know what I'm saying. But anyone can do whatever they want. Because yeah. I was listening to one show. The guy picked all wings. <laughs> you know? right, I crazy. mean, it's just. But who would you? Who would you? You would have Ovechkin. I know that. Um, I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I love Ovechkin, but he's getting old. If I'm starting a team, my right, center, you're saying right, right now, now, yeah, it would have to be Connor McDavid at center. I mean, there's no one else that I think can really compare. I mean, there's a couple of guys that are up there, but at his age, he's just uh, well ahead of everybody. Um, my goalie, I still have to go with Brayden Holtby. I love Brayden Holtby. See, the goalie's the hardest thing for me. It is. It really, really I is. honestly think that I would go with... I wouldn't go with Rene. Well, no, you just picked McDavid. It would, and who's your third? McDavid. Um, McDavid, Holtby. And you don't have to pick a defenseman. defenseman I'm just a, defenseman is tough. Yeah. Um, I mean, Brett Burns is one of the top right defensemen. No. Yeah. I don't like him that much just because, like we were talking about, he's very offensive and not very defensive. He gets caught a lot. Um, I'd probably go Eric Carlson for defense. Yeah. I. The only reason I ask this is because, like, as much as I'm a Penguins fan, the only thing that scares me about McDavid is that he, as as many points as he does get, yeah. he does have dry spells. Yeah. You know, and everyone does, but he's been on the team for three years. I believe he's won the scoring title every year since he's been on the yeah. team, but he's only made the playoffs one time. And that's he the thing that scares me. He does. And so for me, I would I would have to pick Cross because I just don't think from uh, – not as much as skill, but just as much as his presence will make the other players better because the defense is going to follow him. Yeah. Um, and that's why I think, you know, as much as Crosby's a great player, I also think having Malkin makes him better, just like Kuznetsov with Ovechkin and all that stuff. But I was really thinking about it when I listened to the podcast, and I was like, I would have to go Crosby. Goaltender? I mean, I would have to go Bobrovsky. Yeah. You know, just... Just solely based on he kills it during the regular season. And if he could get on a team that actually tries to score goals, he'd be so much better because the Blue Jackets are so defensive-minded with Tortorella. Yeah. Um, and the third guy, it, it was it was interesting, though, because I think, honestly, I would pick John Carlson. Yeah. As a, as a Penguins fan, that's tough to say, but I just think he is is developing into not only a great offensive player but a good defensive player yes. and he's shown that he can be a leader now i don't think he's going to get an a yet because backstrom and Oshie are on yeah. the team but once one of those guys lee oh no i'm sorry orpic but if orpic doesn't have the a it's Oshie's. you know it's a c is ovechkin a is backstrom but i would carlson's one of those guys that you know he's not going to get you a crazy amount of points he might, but he's going to play good defense, too. I mean, he is a very good player, so yeah, I would have to go back. Or Carlson, which is... I go with a different Carlson. Yeah. You're, you're taking the Carlson with a K, I'm taking the Carlson with a C. I like um, what's that? I like them both. Yeah, no, it's it's hard to do that. I was yes. really thinking about it. It's like, I was even thinking, like, Dreisaitl, Line A, 
Bobrovsky, and I was yep. like, no, but our defense would be shit. You know what I'm saying? But uh, because both of those guys really don't like to play defense either. Um, all right, so anything else? That's it. You know, we got 20 more guys to go. Obviously, you're going to know most of the names, but it's going to be interesting to see where we put yeah. each player. Um, like I said in the beginning, we're going to try to do this every Thursday, upload it Thursday or Friday. we got other shows to put in there as well. we got fantasy football stuff starting. Remember in the oh, let's go on. Uh, remember in the beginning of the episode we talked about Fantasy Bros Draft Kit. The link will be in the description. The promo code is BB Sports fifteen to save fifteen percent off. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Also comment below on what you guys think. Uh, you know, obviously what you guys think of our lists <laughs> and you know what uh, and give us ideas on stuff you want to see because with the NHL it's going to start getting bare you know what I'm saying so training camp does start at the end of I think September no 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 like the beginning of September but still you got a month there um, uh, also follow us on Instagram I try to be as as up to date as possible and stuff but I do have a job you know so I, I got to pay the bills and uh on Twitter as well, I'm at Big Tuna BBS. Bradder is at Defense Twelve. Brad and Corey is at. It's going with two E's. Two E's. Puck Schmucks out. You got me saying that shit all the time now. 